can be found in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30 and then we'll <clears throat> jump over to Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 Hebrews 11 are we ready yes let's go by faith the Israelites marched around the walls of Jericho for seven days and the walls fell flat so when the people heard the trumpet blast, they shouted as loud as they could, and suddenly the walls of Jericho crumbled and fell before them, and the people of Israel poured into the city from every side and captured it. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you this morning for your presence here amongst us, God. I pray this morning, Holy Ghost, that you would that you would do what only you can do, and that the messenger would do the only logical thing, which is hide behind the cross. Father God, I pray, Lord, that minds would be alert, spirits would be open, as your word finds a place in each and every heart to develop and germinate, God, that fruit may bear, Lord. Fruit may come forth 30, 60, and 100 fold. We give you all the praise this morning in Jesus' mighty and majestic name. Somebody say amen. 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 You may be seen. After 40 some years of wandering in the desert, the only thing standing between the Israelites and the promised land was one city. After an entire generation had died off in the wilderness due to their unbelief, uh, God's people were finally ready to possess the promise of God. Just one city separated these believers from the promised land. But this one city, Jericho, was a military fortress with a massive wall. And you might be thinking this morning, what's the big issue with that? It's, it's just a wall, you know? A lot of people have climbed a wall before. Jeremiah, have you ever climbed a wall? Have you ever climbed a wall? I have. Johnny, I know you... Amen. Johnny, you climbed the wall, many of them. Amen. I, I know I've had my share of walls I've climbed. Matter of fact, when we first moved into our house, I climbed the wall and fell flat on the other side. You remember that? Amen. So I'm kind of sensitive when we talk about walls. But this wall in Jericho was not your ordinary wall because the walls itself could have been at least 45 feet tall and possibly 40 feet thick. Mm -hmm. The walls were so thick, I want you to follow me, the walls were so thick that some of the people, including Rahab, was able to make a home inside the walls. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> there was tremendous fear by the people of Jericho who were inside the walls. There was the fear of the Israelites and what they might do to them. Uh, verse 1 says in, in Josh, Joshua chapter 6, it says, Jericho was shut up tight as a drum because of the people of Israel. The entire city gates were locked and guarded. Jericho had heard about how the Lord had fought for his people and the people of Jericho were so frightened of God's people <laughs> that even with their massive walls, the entire city was on lockdown, sort of like what we had when they had the virus that was moving around. No one could leave the city and no one could come into the city. Humanly speaking, Jericho or the walls of Jericho were impenetrable. God tells Joshua, the leader of the Israelites, the plan to overtake this city called Jericho. Here's the plan. God's people were to march around the city one time a day for six days. But on the seventh day, God's people are told to march around the city seven times and on the seventh time, on the seventh time, 
the priest was to blow the trumpet long and loud. Amen. And hearing the trumpets, the entire nation that had walked around the city seven times were to let out a shout that was long and loud. God said, follow my instructions and the mighty walls of Jericho will fall down. The secret to the wall of Jericho falling was in the people of God's ability to obey the details. Because this morning, I'm here to tell you that your faith is in the details. Sure, God did. He told Joshua in the beginning that Jericho was already and already belonged to Israel. Amen. Can you imagine that? God already told him before the walls even fell down. He said, this city already belonged to you. He said, before you graduated, he said, that degree already belonged to you. He said, while you were living in the apartment, that house over there, that belonged to you. Mm -hmm. By faith. And Joshua had faith in what God had said. But for the wall to fall, they needed to follow the details. For Joshua to say, amen, God, I believe in you, but then turn around and not follow the details would have showed a lack of faith there. Footnote. You can say, who you believe in, but your actions are going to show who you believe in. Amen. I want us to listen to the details this morning that God gave to Joshua. Verse 3, here's what the Lord said for them to do. March around the city, all your soldiers, circle that city once. Next command, repeat this for six days. Next command, have the seven priests carry seven ram's horns, trumpets in front of the ark or the chest, which represented the presence of God. Next command, and then have the priests blowing away on the trumpets. Next command, and then a long blast on the ram's horn. Then the next command, when you hear that, Meaning that that's a command. Sometimes we can't talk, but we need to hear. Amen. Next command. All the people are to shout at the top of their lungs. Next, Then he says, the city wall will collapse at once. <laughs> All the people, next command, are to enter. Next command. Every man straight on in. Mm -hmm. Then he told the people, set out. March around the city. Next command. Have the armed guard march before the chest of God. Next command. Joshua had given the orders to the people, don't shout. In fact, next command. Don't even speak. Not so much as a whisper. Until you hear me say, shout. Last command. Then shout away. My brother and sister, the, the thing that I want to concentrate on this morning is one of the commands that God gave to the people, which was be silent. Mm. Be silent. I'm not making this up. If we look at verse 10, verse 10 in Joshua says, let there be complete silence. Except for the trumpets Joshua commanded. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout and then shout. God's people were to literally and completely be silent as they went around the city. They were not to speak a single word. Not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout and then shout. There were, when you think about this command for a minute, we're not going to do a lot of shouting, not, not yet. When you think about this command that he gave not to talk, this brought some major difficulties in doing this. <laughs> there were at least a million people. 
Can you imagine for a minute a large group of people moving anywhere without any type of hum, any type of song, any type of roaring of voices? Uh, and and let, me, let me make this a little bit more plain. They had children to keep up with. <laughs> and some of us know how kids can run off. You know, no, they also had soldiers to get in line. They also had to explain the routes to be pointed out and taken. And that's just one obstacle. They would also have difficulty ignoring the insults of the citizens of Jericho who had watched them go around the wall. The first day the people of Jericho were you know, they were probably quiet. Uh, they were probably teasing. Um, well, they, now you know what? I take that back. The first day, the teasing didn't start because it, it looked kind of bizarre. You would have to, you would have to agree with me. You know, they probably thought, what are these crazy people doing walking around the city? But on the second day, by then the people of Jericho would have surely mocked the Jewish people. What are y'all doing marching around our walls? Do y'all think we left a door open somewhere? Are y'all afraid to fight? Why don't y'all try to get in? We'll show y'all how this city get out here in Jericho, you bunch of cowards. And as they marched around the city, looking at this massive wall, you see, and they were high and the city gates were securely shut. Every time they went around the city, seeing the walls, these big walls, helped God's people realize that for us to get this victory, it would take God. But you know what? The silence was good. The silence was good. You see, with silence, they couldn't talk themselves out of the promised land. Mm -hmm. With silence, they could not complain about how silly the plan was. You see, with silence, they couldn't spread negativity through the people and make them give up. Yes. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 15. Isaiah speaks for the Lord and says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness, in quietness, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength. But you would not. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 19 says the following. A person who talks too much gets into trouble. A wise person learns to be quiet. You notice that a, a wise per person learns. That means that you just don't acquire the take. I mean, you just don't come in birthed with the gift to be quiet. <laughs> you see? But as you get older, you become wiser and you realize that, uh, you know, when words are many, sin is an absence. A perfect example of that proverb is in this story. Four pastors went on a fishing trip. And after they come back to the shore, they were sitting around the campfire. And one of them suggested that, that each of them confess a secret sin. They all agreed. And the first one said, well, sometimes I go down to the track and place a bet on the horses. So that's my secret sin. The second one said, mine is that I have an uncontrollable temper. I get so mad at my wife that I blow my stack and bust out some of the windows. The third preacher said, I've kept this secret for years, but I can't resist having a few whiskeys after a rough meeting with the elders. <laughs> there was a long silence as the three preachers looked expectantly at the fourth pastor. Finally, he said, well, I guess it's my turn. My sin is gossiping, and I can't wait to get home to tell everyone what y'all said. 
So the people of God need to be silent. Number two. The second point that I want to focus on is doing what God's word says. Mm. Eric, can I ask some your water? Thank you, my brother. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, after you get through with praise and worship, yeah. you're going to be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> if you really do it. You see, obedience is a major part of faith. In our story, there were 12 commands that the believers needed to obey. But for the sake of time, I'm not going to list all of them again because the point of the commands was for the people to do what God had said do. The Bible says that by faith, the walls of Jericho fell and the people had marched around them for seven days. What is it that God honors most? Is it saying, I have faith? Obedience. Nope, because many have called Jesus Lord, Lord, but have later fallen away and stopped serving him. Is it natural abilities? Could it be spiritual gifts? Could it be talents? Uh, no, I don't think so, because there are many who have had great abilities, but have wasted them on worthless things like the prodigal son who wasted his father's money. Is it an attractive appearance or personality? Negative, Ghost Rider. King Saul was tall and handsome, but he finished his race badly. You see, this morning, saints, I want to tell you that it's obedience that most honors God and the thing that God honors most. Some of us have not heard God, have not heard God's voice for some time. Some of us still don't believe that God speaks to us, but sometimes the problem is this. If you have not been obedient to what God has already told you to do in his word, why would he continue to speak to you? Why? My brothers and sisters, even Jesus was honored and given a name above every name because he was obedient. The Bible says he was obedient to death, even death on a cross. Amen. Instead of learning or leaning on your own understanding, we need to ask God for his understanding in order to be obedient Amen. to him. Amen. You, know, you know, sometimes we will say, Evangelist Christie, amen, or agree with God's word, but don't, but won't do what he says oh, in his God. word and think that's obedience. Hmm. See, let me, let me help you this morning. That's called rebellion, <laughs> which is even worse than disobedience. You see, because you can be, dis you can be disobedient because you just don't know out of ignorance. But rebellion is when we know what God's word says, but still won't do what it says. Yeah. Joshua did not tell the people how many times they were going to be required to circle the city. Mm -hmm. Or what would happen at the end of the seven days of the march. The people were given their instructions one day at a time. And at the end of their assignment for that day, after they had circled the walls, they headed back to their camp. And nothing happened. They had obeyed Joshua, who was obeying God. They had circled the walls, but when they returned to the camp, the walls were still standing and no one had surrendered. And they seem to be no closer to the promised land than, than they had been before they had marched. And this is the way it was for the second day and the third day and the fourth day and the fifth day and the sixth. And so it was after six times around the walls on day seven. Can you imagine with me for a minute? if they would have quit on the fourth day or just leaned on their own understanding and attacked Jericho on the fifth day. 
sometimes obeying God is different, is difficult for us Amen. because what happens when God doesn't move as quickly <laughs> as we want him to do? Come on now. What happens then? Mm -hmm. I know y'all going to act like, you know, y'all don't know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. Matter of fact, I'm talking to the church across the street. I ain't talking about y'all because y'all don't ever have a problem. Great people of faith, we respond to God's word immediately. We respond so fast that it turns God's neck. But I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about them folks. You see, this is where most of us will lean on our own understanding. We start to feel justified in pulling back our obedience uh, to God and come up with our own plans. My brothers and sisters, it's not good enough to talk about God. It's not good enough to come to church and sing, although that's cool. It's not good enough to just read your Bible. It's not good enough to just fast. All of those things are good with obedience, but with making a choice to not obey what God tells us to do, all those things mean nothing. Amen. Just the fact alone that we do those things without obeying God should set off bales of conviction screaming in our souls that we need to repent of thinking that we are saved when there is a good possibility that we aren't. So when we obey the word of God, our obedience validates Amen. our faith. Amen. I know I wasn't going to get too many amens on that section. Some told me to speed on through it. The third, the third point that I want to encourage you with before I leave this morning, and you, our praise brings Amen. victory. Amen. Joshua chapter 6 verse 20 says the following. So when the people heard the trumpets blast, they shouted as loud as they could. And suddenly, Ari, say suddenly. Suddenly? Suddenly. The walls of Jericho crumbled and fell before them. And the people of Israel pulled into the city from every side and captured it. So if the people of God thought the plan was crazy before, now we find out the plan gets even more strange. After they walk around Jericho one time for six days, and, and by the way, to circle Jericho one time was 1.5 miles. After they get through blowing the trumpets. On the seventh day, they were to walk around Jericho 44 times. Seven. Huh? Seven. How many times? Seven. Seven. <laughs> you see, to circle Jericho time, to circle Jericho seven times, that was 10.5 miles. Hmm. On the seventh day, when they heard this loud trumpet, the people are to shout as loud as they could. How could shouting as loud as they could make the thick walls of Jericho fall? How could shouting make these thick walls of Jericho just how? How could shouting? How could shouting? Shouting doesn't even, uh, shouting at home makes the police come. Shouting, how does shouting, how does shouting change anything? If I shout at work, I get fired. If I shout at my kids, they cry. How could shouting make these thick walls of Jericho fall? How could 1.5 million People shouting caused this mountain of a wall to crawl, to, to crumble. The plan that God had given them was so unusual that I have to go deeper this morning. We all allow me five minutes. Yes. You see, at this time, there were five different ways that people would commonly attack a walled city. 
Now, the first way, they would go over the walls with ladders. The second way is they would dig a tunnel underneath the wall. The third way is they would smash a hole in the wall with a battering ram. Also, they would put a siege on the city and starve them out. <laughs> the last way is they would use deception and offer them a gift like the Trojan horse. And once they take the gift in, they would come out. See, the whole point of God's strategy was to show that victory comes through the Lord and not the wisdom of men. God's ways are not our ways. God told Noah to build a boat. He told Abraham to sacrifice his son. He put Joseph into a position of influence by giving him dreams. God told Gideon he needed a smaller army to be a great army. He defeated the Philistines using a boy with a slingshot. He chose the persecutor of the church, which was Saul, to be an apostle of the church. This is the same God who chose a piece of wood and his blood to redeem on, sinful yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Paul said, for the foolishness, the foolishness of God yeah. is wiser than man's Ooh, wisdom, yeah. and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Yes, yes. yes Lord. God's ways seem mm. foolish, mm -hmm. but God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen. God told the people on the seventh day, open your mouth and shout. Amen. Tell the people that I want them to open their mouth and praise me. Mm -hmm. Praise me with your voice. Praise me with a loud voice. Mm -hmm. Praise me with all your heart. You can, walk, you can walk around all you want, but without worship and praising me, nothing will happen. You have to open your mouth and praise God. You praise him because you know that God is tearing down the wall. I, you know, I love that God didn't ask them to say words quietly in prayer. He told them to give a loud shout. Yes. God said, I want your praise so loud that the devil who built the wall will hear your praise. Yes. You see, yes. 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 walls, they mm. represent division. Come on now. Mm. Walls represent separation mm. and barriers. You see, mm. on this Sunday morning, the Lord is telling somebody, yes, that if you praise me, yeah. I'll break down the division mm -hmm. between you yeah. and your spouse. Yes. Yes. Praise me, yes. and I'll break down the barriers between you and good health. Amen. Praise me, and I'll bust yes. through the division between you and joy. Praise me, and I'll bust through the barriers between you and self-control. Praise me, and I'll bust down the division between you and your children. Praise me, and I'll break down the barrier between you and peace. Praise me, and I'll break through depression. Praise me, and I'll break through loneliness. Praise me, and I'll break through feeling empty. Then he said, Yes. Yes, God. Yes, God. You ought to praise me Hallelujah. because I'm your God. Mm. Yes. Praise me because I've already commanded Amen. you to. You see in the book of Psalms, verse uh, chapter 150, verse 6, yes. the Lord says, let everything that has yes. breath yes. praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, he said, let the trees yes. praise the yes. Lord. Yes. Let the earth yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Let the fish yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Let everything that has breath yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Let the dogs bark and yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Let the wind blow yes. and praise yes. the Lord. Let the mountains roar yes. and praise the Lord. Let the sea swell and praise the Lord. Let 
the Psalms writer said, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. You see, when we use our secret weapons called praise, we invite God into our mess. You see, I was talking to my wife earlier this week. I'm lying, I was debating with her. <laughs> and um, we were talking about complaining and stuff to that degree. And uh, we came across an article that said, <laughs> instead of talking about how, talking about how big your problem is, running to God with it, why don't you run to your problem and tell it how big God is? You see, you can't worship God and complain at the same time. Choose ye this day who you will serve. You see, whoever getting your attention, whoever you serve, out of the fruit of your lips, you see, if you're complaining, Yes. Don't wonder why the sky is falling, Chicken Little, because you're getting out of the abundance of your mouth. Yes. But God says, if you praise me, yes. I will move heaven yes. and earth. Yes. When you praise yes. me, I will get in your situation yes. and yes. cause things to turn yes. for yes. his purpose. Yes. So that isn't the blab and grabs yes. of sermon. That's uh, praising God because you ought to. Yes. Praising him because... He's done mighty things Amen. in our lives. Amen. Mighty things. Amen. This morning, yes. if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. there's some times when it's just flat out hard to praise God. I'm not even going to joke with you this morning. Sometimes our emotions don't line up with God's goodness. Amen. Sometimes it becomes difficult to praise God when you don't see no evidence of light at the end mm -hmm. of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's when, and God understands when we go through that. You know how I know he understands. He says, baby, I know sometimes life can be rough. I know sometimes you ain't going to feel it. I know sometimes you might not see me working in your situation. Sometimes it feel like I ain't working in your situation. But that's when I want you to offer me the sacrifice of praise. This morning, Father, I thank you for each and every believer that's here. I thank you, Lord, that your word has become a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. I thank you.